<laughs> My understanding of the protocol here is when there's a verse that has no purport, you, we recite together the verse that has the purport, and then we go back. Read the translation like that? Yes. Yes, okay. So it's two verses, one without a purport, and then text 23, Canto 1, chapter 19. What? Okay, read the verse alone, and then chant and, okay. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Text 22 that has no purport translation all that was spoken by the great sages was very sweet to hear, full of meaning, and appropriately presented as perfectly true. So, after hearing them, Maharaj Prikshit desired to hear of the activities of Lord Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, congratulated the great sages. So here's what the king said. This is Maharaj Prikshit's words. Samagata sarva ta eva sarve Vedayata murti darastri prishte Nehata namutra chakashchanartha Rate paranu graham atma shilam Samagata sarvata eva sarve Vedayata murti daras triprishte Nehata namutra chakashchanartha Rate parano graham atma shilam Ladies.
Samagata assembled Sarvataha <coughs> from all directions. Eva certainly Sarve all of you Vedaha Supreme Knowledge Yata as Murti Dharaha personified Tri Prishte on the planet of Brahma which is situated above the three planetary systems namely the upper intermediate and lower worlds na not iha in this world ataha thereafter noa nor amortra amotra in the other world cha also kashchana any other Artaha, interest. Rite, save and accept. Para, others. Anugraham, doing good to. Atma, shilam, own nature. Translation. <coughs> the king said, Oh, great sages, you have all very kindly assembled here, having come from all parts of the universe. You are all as good as supreme knowledge personified, who resides in the planet above the three worlds, Satyaloka. Consequently, you are naturally inclined to do good to others, but for this, you have no interest, either in this life or in the next. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Six kinds of opulences, namely, wealth, strength, fame, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation are all originally the different attributes pertaining to the absolute personality of Godhead. The living beings, who are part and parcel entities of the Supreme Being, have all these attributes partially up to the full strength of 78%. In the material world, these attributes, up to 78% of the Lord's attributes, are covered by the material energy as the sun is covered by a cloud. The covered strength of the sun is very dim compared to the original glare and similarly the original color of the living beings with such attributes becomes almost extinct. There are three planetary systems, namely lower worlds, intermediate worlds, upper worlds. The human beings on earth are situated at the beginning of the intermediate worlds, but living beings like Brahma and his contemporaries live in the upper worlds of which the topmost is Satyaloka. In Satyaloka, the inhabitants are fully cognizant of Vedic wisdom, and thus the mystic cloud of the material energy is cleared. Therefore, they are known as the Vedas personified. Such persons, being fully aware of knowledge, both mundane and transcendental, have no interest in either the mundane or transcendental worlds. Interesting, huh? They are practically desireless devotees. In the mundane world, they have nothing to achieve. And in the transcendental world, they are full in themselves. Then, why do they come to the mundane world? They descend on, di on different planets as messiahs by the order of the Lord to deliver the fallen souls on the earth. They come down and do good to the people of the world in different circumstances under different climatic influences. They have nothing to do 
in this world, save and accept, reclaim the fallen souls, rotting in material existence, deluded by material energy. Lessons in the Bhagavatam are fascinating. Um, where is there such a literature as Srimad Bhagavatam? In the world of theology, where is there such literature? We could point to a whole constellation of understandings, authoritative understandings, that it's not available in, in, in other literature, other theologies, just not available. We're so fortunate. So let's point to some of these. Um, the structure of the universe is one of the items just within this verse, this tri prishta. Three prishte on the planet of Brahma, which is situated above the three lower. There, there certainly is an idea of hell and heaven, and this is an intermediate place between hell and heaven. That's a common idea. And then the details, like you know, seven upper, and where we are in relation to those seven upper, and, and heaven is not the topmost by any means. Gosh, where is that in any other theology? I just spent some time, like a lot of time, uh, 13 parts seminar on the teachings of Dhruva and I learned a lot about the pole star. Here's one of those. The pole star is at the topmost region of Swarga, but it's below Maharloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka, and Brahmaloka. That's where it is. And when it's described that the planets move in a clockwise direction, keeping the right side to the pole star, of course it's vertical circumambulation, because there's higher planets, Specifically, it says a number of places, the Saptarishis, which we know as the Big Dipper, but it's Vedic languages. I'm sure Prahladana Swami is registering all of this. The Saptarishi planets are below Dhruvaloka. And Dhruvaloka is below Maharloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka. So when the, the planets move, like the Vedic planetarium, the movements of the it's those three. So sometimes Trilokya is those three. Bu, Buvar and Swarga Lokas. And Druvaloka is above them, and then above them are four other planetary systems. Like, where is that literature within theology that gives that explanation? Hmm? The Vedas have it, of course, Bhagavatam is not the only literature that was in the Vedas that has that, but it's, it's there in the Bhagavatam. And now here specifically, this tree Prishte is referring not just to Bhu, Bhuvar, and Swargaloka, but it can mean other things, and it means in this case, above the upper intermediate and lower planetary systems, that is the topmost. And the topmost is Brahmaloka. And the persons who reside in Brahmaloka, this is not in other theologies, but it's really important for us to understand, they're highly qualified persons. <clears throat> and specifically, th there are two things mentioned, that are, they're, they're qualifications. They're Vedas personified. They, they're, they're absolute truth personified. Now, they have received that they're not Narayana. So there is a distinction between that which is 
the, the Vedas are non different than Narayana. The Vedas, the Vedic wisdom, Shruti, Aparusheya Shabda, Praman, is non different than the personality of Godhead. This Srimad Bhagavatam is as worshipable as the deity, as Nama Rupa Guna Lila are worshipable. It's equally worshipable. Now, in other theologies, they honor their scripture in a similar manner. But just a little anecdotal sharing. Well, <coughs> um, when the, the Brooklyn Temple was purchased, the previous owner was Temple Mount Sinai, and the neighborhood was so terrible they sold the building. Um, and on the second floor, the main floor was the worship place, and the second floor over on the side was a place where they kept the scripture, the Torah. And I saw the room before it got modified, but it was like a small room, modestly small room compared to the temple room, certainly, and then a platform, and then a platform, and then a platform, and the Torah was on top of a stanchion that was on top of that platform. And it had, you know, silk coverings. The book wasn't still there, but the place, they, they, they worshipped the Torah as without other examples. The Sikhs, they worship the scripture, the holy scripture. It, it's, it's standard. This is none different than Krishna. And so the personified Vedas like, you know, chapter 87 of Canto 10, prayers by the personified Vedas. Those are personified Vedas. And the personalities who reside in Brahmaloka, here they're being called as personified Vedas. Because they're invested with potency, they have received that, and therefore they carry it, and therefore they're, they're non-different. And persons who have that connection with the personality of Godhead's message, they're carrying his message and they're, in one sense, personifying those messages. It's something that ideally we're supposed to do. Meaning, <clears throat> there's the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita and we distribute the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita and we're supposed to be like perambulatory Bhagavad Gita's. Meaning, by our example, we show this is the message of Bhagavad Gita. Yes? Not an easy task. Yes? But that's our assignment. That's one of our assignments. And another is give the knowledge to others. And one of the ways you give the knowledge to others is, sir, please take this book. Another is you, you conduct yourself according to the teachings in the book. You're the personified Bhagavad Gita. Now, both are a challenge, but developing the quality and character of a Vaishnava, that's the purpose of Bhagavad Gita for us, not just give the book and we don't know what's in the book, we don't live the book, we just sell the book. I've been listening to um, a series of lectures that Prabhupada gave here in Los Angeles, and he's, he's um, explaining the book distribution, I'm mentioning it because it's the month of book marathon. Um, Prabhupada was saying, it was a question and answer session. He, the question at the end was, um, how do we remember all this? Be, like, because I forget. You know, I'm a Kali Yuga person and I hear and I'm like inspired and then I forget. And Prabhupada gave a very simple answer. He said, you, 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 just, you do what you're doing in the consciousness of who you're doing it for. That, those weren't his words, but that was his message. And he gave the example, just like back, back to Godhead magazine. You could sell so many magazines and you probably find a lot more sales. People are interested in other literature besides Back to Godhead magazine. But you're distributing Back to Godhead magazine because it's about Krishna. So when you're distributing the Back to Godhead magazine because it's about Krishna, you're thinking of Krishna. Now our book distributors are not always in that consciousness, but that's the, the privilege 
the potency and the opportunity to be in Krishna consciousness by doing this, giving the message of Bhagavad Gita and other Vedic teachings and personifying that message to others. Um, something that some of us do, I'm looking at Prahlad and Swami, oh, he's not here. Uh, tr some of us travel a lot. Well, Vijaya travels a lot too. So I'm very conscious when I'm traveling that the whole Hare Krishna movement is being judged by me. They don't know the whole Hare Krishna movement. But if I conduct myself in an inappropriate manner, or if I conduct myself in an appropriate manner, there's a bad feeling or a good feeling towards the whole Hare Krishna movement. Without anecdotal stories, our spreading of Krishna consciousness has been impeded by devotees not representing the teaching properly in their, in, in their interactions with others. In colleges, I mean, because I go to colleges, I, I know that from personal experience. I'll just like quick. I was one time trying to arrange uh, for a permit to distribute books at the Bronx Zoo because it's a public place. So I met with the, the gentleman that's in charge of the Bronx Zoo. He was a nice man. He was treating me very kindly, but the answer was always no. It wasn't even like a no, it was just like not yes. And finally, after like some number of visits and exchanges with him, he said, let me tell you why I'm reluctant. And he told the story of his son who met somebody in a parking lot somewhere who was told blah, 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 take the book. My son liked the book, but he felt cheated because it wasn't blah, 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 blah. It was when we were selling albums and, you know, Stevie Wonder and, you know, take this. And he felt cheated. So I don't want that happening in the zoo here. You know, if you come, you're okay, but don't send those other people here. It was an obstacle to spread Krishna consciousness because somebody in their enthusiasm, didn't live the life of our teachings. So, rather than dwell on that, it, it, it's, it's an opportunity to, to live the teachings and distribute the teachings. So, here, the king, Maharaj Pictet, is appreciating that the sages have that, their Vedas personified, which means they also show the character of the Vedas personified, and one of the elements in that character, let's go to the, the, the Sanskrit of the verse itself, in the third line, neha iha atta, <laughs> na iha atta, not in this world or thereafter. So they're not interested, they're, well, they're doing what they're doing, that is going, descending from this upper region to the lower regions, to give knowledge and they have no purpose material purpose and the material purpose is they're not doing it so they can get something in this life or in the next life in this world or the next that's the word for word and also in the verse consequently you are naturally inclined to do good to others but for this, you have no interest, either in this life or the next. It's not um, karma palatyag. You're, 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 it's, it's not just a duty, it's a love. And even if it's duty without attachment to the result in this life or the next. These are transcend this is character of a transcendentalist. We're mixed trying to become transcendentalists. <laughs> That's our position, largely. And we're being instructed in Bhagavad Gita to, and in the Bhagavatam, to come to that standard where it's not in this life or the next, that what's, then what's the purpose? It's just do good to others. 
just do good to others. Compassion, transcendental compassion, because it's, as Prabhupada was told by Bhakti Siddhanta, it'll be good for you and good for them. Or it's good for you. <laughs> it's not the consciousness of, um, I mean, the higher consciousness is for the satisfaction of the personality of Godhead, carrying out the order of the spiritual master. Prabhupada, in, in this lecture in Los Angeles, he gave this example of himself. I came to the, your country under the order of the spiritual master to do so, and I feel protected by that order of the spiritual master. Whatever the result is, it's up to him, it's up to the Supreme Lord. So that can be our consciousness also. Certainly we want, Prabhupada wanted a result, but he wasn't attached to the result or thinking himself the cause of the result. Now that's, a, that's, that's the consciousness of these persons who the king is addressing. Now, last point, because I know in Los Angeles there's always questions, so I'm gonna leave time for questions. Um, I'll read the section again that's like interesting. Such persons, the residents of Satya Loka, are known as the Vedas personified. Such persons are fully aware of knowledge, both mundane and transcendental, have no interest in either the mundane or transcendental worlds. Well, of course they have an interest in the transcendental world. So what does he mean? They don't have an interest in the transcendental world. It's likened to being an enjoyer of the mundane world, nor do they want to become the enjoyer of the transcendental world. The enjoying spirit is not, the separate enjoying spirit is not theirs. They simply want to be an instrument of the mercy of the personality Godhead and distribute that, be a conduit or a nimitta, an instrument of the mercy of the personality Godhead because people are suffering unnecessarily. So let me give this benefit. That's their, that's their mission. Karma palatyag. Detachment from the result. They are practically desireless devotees. Now there is a desire. Desireless means material desire. And desire is a concomitant factor of the soul, so there's really strong spiritual desire, but material desire is vanquished. In the mundane world, they have nothing to achieve, and in the transcendental world, they are full in themselves. This is how we're supposed to understand. They are atmaramas, or approaching that stage of Sukadeva Goswami, who is an atmarama. That is, they're, they're not needing something outside themselves for happiness. Their happiness is being connected to the Supreme and being an instrument of the Supreme's will. We're not there yet, but the sages that have come to receive him from all over the universe, and particularly from those very, very qualified persons, all the way from Brahma Loka, came to this earth planet to be present and give auspiciousness upon the imminent departure of Maharaj Prikshit. That's what they came for, give their benediction. When anything, <clears throat> when there's an event, it's like devotees often like uh, VIPs to come to whatever the function is, Rathiyatra, Krishna Jadmastami, or something or something, they like because it creates auspiciousness by their presence. And it creates auspiciousness by their presence for the, these elevated personalities to come at the departure of Maharaj Prikshit. He knows that. It's something similar to when Bali Maharaj was performing sacrifice and in a distance he saw like a second sun rising 
on the horizon, Vamana approaching, brilliant like another sun. It was, wow, this sacrifice is going to be made auspicious because of whoever that is, this little dwarf Brahmana, auspiciousness will be generated for this sacrifice. It will be superlatively successful. And within his heart, he wanted to give to this little Brahmin boy. It's not even before they met. It was just seeing him approach. It's, it's significant. Marsh Prikshit is not performing a sacrifice. He's going to leave his body and he knows it. And that the sages have come. He's feeling, wow, how benedictory. How, what great fortune. And you've come not to achieve something for yourself, not in this life or in the next life. You've come just to give the benediction that you're carrying, this transcendental knowledge for me and for whoever else is assembled here. So that's not our standard yet. That's the consciousness we're being encouraged to cultivate. That's like, you know, we're here and they're there and hearing the message of the Bhagavatam, it has, just like the name of Krishna has potencies, the message of the Bhagavatam, also Krishna has potencies and it, the, the message itself can carry us to that place, just the sound vibration. And that's the faith with which we should hear Srimad Bhagavatam. I'll tell one more Prabhupada story and get an end. Um, I heard this from Tamal Krishnamaraj. <clears throat> during the travels of Prabhupada doing his Pandal program in what was called at the time the World Sankirtan Party what time do I have to end? 8.15? 8.20, okay so um, somewhere I don't, I don't know where it was they had the standard, the, the panda was set up, the audience was assembled, nice kirtan, Chutananda leaving the kirtan, very lively, everyone was dancing, sat down, Prabhupada started speaking in a Hindi. The sannyasis looked at each other and got up to leave. And right in the middle of the panda lecture, Prabhupada said, where are you going? He said, well, Prabhupada, we don't understand Hindi. And so we were going to leave. And he said, even if you don't understand, the sound vibration will purify you, stay. And thereafter, whenever he spoke in Hindi, they stayed. He said, so then he explained later, you should have faith that just the sound vibration is purifying. He explained, I would sit and hear Bhakti Siddhanta and many, many times my brain was puzzled. That was his language. My brain was puzzled. But I had faith in hearing. So wherever we are in our Krishna consciousness, it's helpful to have faith to hear the message of Srimad Bhagavatam, whatever we understand or don't understand. It's powerful, just like Kirtan, it's powerful. And if your faith switch is on and you're hearing, it's going to have a greater effect than just passive mechanical when you're chanting your japa or attending kirtan or hearing the bhagavatam or whatever it is, the sound vibration, that shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam, that's our, that's our bhagavat dharma process. Hare Krishna. Any discussion? Archita. Archita. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for a brief but very potent presentation. Now, Throughout the Bhagavatam, I want to speak of this section here, reference to beings coming from all over the universe. Yeah. Now, as a, an experienced preacher dealing with other religionists over your course of your Krishna conscious career, I'm sure you may have been questioned about this because most of the major religions, they don't believe this. They think that humans are the pinnacle either of creation or evolution. They don't really believe that they're beings on other planets, even though within their own scriptures it says so-and-so descended from the sky or whatever, they still don't accept it. They think that we are the pinnacle of God's creation or of evolution and belief in the, you know, people from other planets and out in the universe. They don't really buy it. Now, have you ever been questioned directly about that by anybody no. from any other religion? But if I was, I would smile 
and say, we're not the pinnacle, <laughs> essentially. There are beings, and as we are aspiring for a higher situation, your conception may be above us as heaven. And is it possible to go to heaven and first possible conversely for persons of heaven to give their association here in this world? And you know, you may have that faith or not, but it's certainly possible and they have, they have compassion. You know, depending upon the person, you know, let's, let's blow your mind, sir or madam. There's four planetary systems above that and then there's the spiritual world that's above that. That's what the Vedic wisdom teaches us. So, you know, it depends on the person and the situation and so on. Brigopati up front. Okay. Okay, I see. Thank you, Marge. When preaching, what would you say would, would be more of Prabhupada's mood that we should make sure that everybody goes away with a good impression? Yes. Or that it's maybe in the uh, trying to engage somebody fully, even at the risk of maybe that their mind might be slightly agitated or something yes. like that. Which is, would be you well, know, more important. The, the, the practical consideration is, who is there in this world? There may be some people. You may meet some people. You have probably met such people. They wake up in the morning and think, gee, I hope I meet a devotee that's carrying Bhagavad Gita and they, they offer me the opportunity to take Bhagavad Gita. And then it happens. But the other people, it's like, you know, you, the, there's the risk of agitating their mind because that's not what they want. We do anyway. No, we should do in such a way that at least a reasonable person seeing that exchange, it's, it doesn't agitate, it's, it's uplifting experience. And I'm sure you've had that experience, but I'm sure you've also had the one that people get agitated. So our, our actions as Vaishnavas should be, in a, from a reasonable perspective, very, very kind, very respectful, and you know, appropriate. And still there'll be criticism. It's right in Prabhupada's purports. And that's the risk we take. And we try to not like bend over backwards, but we try to be respectful and represent our, you know, the Siptic succession properly and leave them with going away happy. And it may or may not happen. It's a risk. We put the, you know, letting them rot in the material world to, you know, we put that above it's not like I'm going to go save the people that are rotting in the mature world. That, that, that consciousness is not proper, but the, we, if there's a risk involved. And sometimes it happens. We try to minimize it. So we've got a question over here. Uh, thank you for a very <clears throat> nice, interesting, insightful class, uh, Maharaj. My question is this, uh, in the uh, Satyuluka, as it is mentioned in the text, uh, the individuals who reside there are very advanced spiritually. So my question is that, what is it that is holding them back from going to Vaikuntha? What, what, what qualities are they still lurking within them, even though they are very advanced, which prevents them from going still out of the material world into the Vaikuntha world or the uh, or, or the uh, Goloka world. I'd never heard that question before and I don't recall reading anything that answers that question but I do know one thing and that is uh, Rupanuga Prabhu, Prabhupada disciple, was very keen from time to time he'd write letters to Prabhupada and I saw the letter and I saw Prabhupada's reply. He wanted to know, where does the perfect Christian go? What's the destination? Prabhupada wrote back, it's hard to find one. But if there is such a perfect Christian, they would go to Brahmaloka and they, there they would have the opportunity 
for further understanding of the personality of Godhead and they may after that go back to Godhead. So from that to kind of unpack the statement is they don't really understand who is the personality of Godhead. Now neither do we. <laughs> but we're getting some special mercy descending through our disciplic succession to help take us to that realization through the bhakti process. It's not that they don't do, what they do is also bhakti, but it's incomplete. It's incomplete. And so they go there because they can become complete. Now, while there, here it's being said, you know, they're personified Vedas. And when you read Brihat Bhagavatamrita, there are different personified Vedas. And some are more elevated, and some are intermediate, and some are less elevated. And they were quarreling about something, and the more elevated Vedas, personified Vedas, were kind of like, come on, <laughs> we're not going to participate in this discussion. Here's the understanding. So, personified Vedas can be of different standards also. But, you know, less complete, more complete, and then complete shelter of the personality of Godhead. They're very clear who the personality of Godhead is. So the bhakti is need to be strengthened further with, with under, further understanding and further the Lord is to be pleased. That's all I can say. There's no, I've not heard, read anything specific to that. I see there was some hand up front and we're, we're out of time. What do I do? Huh? Keep going? A comment. But okay, there was somebody else up front that I think wanted to say something too. I just read Prabhupada said in one letter that in in the spiritual world there's a planet where Christ is the presiding deity, so Christians pure Christians would go there. Go where? To this planet. In, Which planet? In, where Christ is the presiding deity. And where is that? In the Vaikuntha realm? In the Vaikuntha, yeah. You read that? I read that just not long ago. They go to the Vaikuntha planet where, where Christ resides. In the Bhagavatam, a letter. If you could find that letter and send it to me, that would really be nice. Someone else, real quick, last question. Maharaj, at the beginning of your class, you were mentioning about the, the importance of Bhagavatam, how fortunate we are having this wonderful yes yes and then later on you also mention about the image that a devotee can project yes and those two things made me thought about that uh, at the beginning of our the history of our movement devotees were not didn't necessarily have that at the car correct and along the road so many things happened yes so and also when in my experience also meeting people, they, they're not really impressed by the philosophy because they might not even know it yet, but they're more interested about how you, you behave. Yes. So... Achar is stronger than prachar. Right. To reconcile that, like the verse that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, apani achari, first behave, then preach. Uh, just a little but last, appreciation. When, vi when visiting New Dwaraka, it's like fills my heart to see, wow, the, after all these years, the standard of deity worship is outstanding. And it's not just a head pujari, it's a whole team of people that really are devoted to the worship of the deity. It's part of what Prabhupada wanted by having residences here, so you just walk across the street and do the worship, not because you got an R1 visa, and you know, get a green card, and but you know, but because you want to worship the deity, you know, the facility that Prabhupada gave to this community could not, might not have been upheld, but it has been upheld. So, compliments to all those who are dedicated to Rukmini Dorkadish and all the other deities, and the superlative standard. It's not just a head pujari; you, the head pujari can't do this. It's the community. So, my compliments to the community for maintaining that nice standard. Thank you, Krishna.